all right how's it going everybody welcome back to the channel now as promised i'm gonna be doing more of these ufc breakdown videos i guess uh not really a breakdown videos but this is more of a recap um on what we just saw from ufc 291 uh i'm not gonna get on the prelims even though you know there were pretty good fights uh cj vergara um what do we know what do we learn about this guy this guy you know he he's pretty accurate but you know his his uh pacing for you know heavy blows and heavy shots it wasn't there like they said in in, in the fight it kind of looked like a sparring rounds which i 100 percent agree uh gabriel uh bonfim i bet it that this dude was gonna end it in the second round man i did not think that he was gonna um beat uh trevin uh giles in round one with the submission um but that's just crazy that's 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 crazy even though i did expect gabriel bofin to win in this fight i did not think that he was gonna do it in the manner that he did in round one anyways um he's a prospect for his uh uh what in the welterweight division for sure uh undefeated in the ufc so far anyways we go into the main card with michael chiesa and kevin holland obviously man i really don't understand people's argument when they thought that michael chiesa was gonna beat kevin holland because michael chiesa has not had a fight since 2021 and the last time he fought was in january of 2021 kevin holland has been consistent he's had five fights since michael chiesa's last win you know what i'm saying so I really don't know what people were expecting uh, Michael Chiesa to do. He doesn't have the momentum, you know, in his career to have anything to show that he could actually beat someone like Kevin Holland. And, uh, you know, Kevin Holland, he did his thing. He did his thing. I'll give him that. Um, next thing, Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green. It hurts, man. It hurts to see uh, someone, you know, that I, that I, I think is a fan favorite for most people. That are fans of the UFC. Tony Ferguson. Uh, him getting pieced up the way he was getting pieced up. And then getting submitted the way he was getting. He was he got submitted man. It was it was tough to see. Uh, there should be a conversation with him and his team. On whether or not he should look to retire. Um, six six losses. In his last six, six wins. I mean in his last six fights. Um... I think it's a telltale sign, man. As unfortunate as, as that may seem, um, I think somebody in this camp might have to bring that conversation forward. Uh, Bobby Green, W, no surprise there. Um, my heart was telling me Tony Ferguson. My brain was telling me Bobby Green. Even though Bobby Green had that no contest in his last fight, um, you know, I think he's, he's in his prime right now. Um, with age and... He's a very elusive fighter, um, especially in the stand-up. Tony Ferguson, man, uh, yeah, it's tough, tough to, tough to watch. It's tough to watch. Uh, Derek Lewis versus Marco Rogelio de Lima. Knockout in the first 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> I mean, what can I say? What can I say? Everybody expected Marco Rogelio de Lima to to win this fight. He had. He had uh, a couple submissions and a couple TKOs in his last five fights. And Derek Lewis has been in, on a losing streak. But Derek Lewis came back conditioned with abs, bro. Nobody expected that. I did not expect Derek Lewis to come back to have abs at, what, 265? That's crazy. Um, obviously, uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima, he got caught with that knee very early. And it wasn't on no science it wasn't on any like technique it was just you know um i guess like a like a like an instinct like a like an instinct to just throw that knee um there was there really wasn't any setup to it um he just opened up with the knee and it landed and marcos rojero de lima he started being defensive and Derek lewis looked for the finish and it was it was there 30 seconds into the fight now, during the John Blahovich versus Alex Pereira fight, it was it was hard for me to focus on this fight because the Terrence Crawford versus the Spence uh, 
fight was going on and I was just going crazy because they were going in a crazy positioning battle and it was just hard to focus on this fight. Though on the times that I was watching um, the John Blachowicz versus Alex Pereira fight, John Blachowicz had Alex Pereira in some pretty scary situations. And then, you know, um, I go on the internet and everybody's saying that John Blachowicz got a robbery but i'm gonna go back and watch this fight you know what i'm saying alex Pereira, you know he he had he had some good moments where he was landing a lot of strikes john blahovic uh looking you know back and forth between the fights of, of the spence versus crawford and and the john blahovic versus alex Pereira. john blahovic had some instances where he looked pretty tired he looked pretty um like defeated um especially like going into round three and towards the endings of round two um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to go back and definitely look at that fight, that John Blachowicz versus Alex Pereira fight. If you go on Twitter, you go on Instagram, you go on the YouTube uh, comments, everybody's saying, or like, uh, not everybody, you know, there's there's always, there's there's, there's those Alex Pereira fanboys, and they're going to defend the win no matter what. But, uh, you know, it, it, it goes into another conversation where people are more, uh, I guess, fans of the fighter and not fans of of, of the sport but that's a conversation for a different day um it's a, it's a topic that i'll probably uh bark at you know maybe till the end of my youtube career but uh, i'm gonna go definitely watch this fight john blahoe versus alice Pereira, and see uh if i think if it was a robbery or not um okay so this was very interesting dustin poirier versus uh justin gaethje for me this fight was 100 percent 100% a coin flip I had no idea because the last time they fought it was a couple years ago so these fighters have you know probably got better hopefully you know what I'm saying and they probably you know did a little bit of uh, film studying hopefully and they did a scouting report on each other um, the way I saw it is okay if Dustin Poirier can push the fight right and force Justin Gaethje to be aggressive. Dustin Poirier has the edge because he's a southpaw and he's used to being like a counterpuncher, and that's how he wins the fights. Even people, people are people say that Dustin Poirier is a super aggressive fighter and he's just like an animal in there. I would beg to differ. I would say that okay, yeah, he does put the pressure on people, but when uh, people start putting the pressure on uh, on Dustin Poirier back, his best moments are from him being a defensive counterpuncher or an offensive counterpuncher um counterpunching nonetheless in the south pop position in the open stance which usually is the stance that he's in but we saw something completely different dustin poirier actually put a lot a lot a lot of pressure on justin gaethje and justin gaethje was being defensive and off of his defense he started putting in offense and i was just like wow this is a pretty interesting fight because how I envisioned this fight to go was, you know, through the entire five rounds, right? So I thought it was going to go through the, the entire five rounds. I know that that round one and round two, uh, it was going to be very, very competitive. And I just thought these guys were just going to put it on each other. And maybe we were going to see a more definitive winner from rounds three to rounds five. That's the way that I envisioned it. But early in, in round one, Dustin Poirier puts a lot of pressure on Justin Gaethje. And Justin Gaethje, boom, defensive, high guard, and he attacks right after he, he defends. And so it was Justin Gaethje being the counter puncher. But he did something that I that, that he really did not do in the last in the last fight. He went atta he attacked Dustin Poirier's base, right? He he threw those leg kicks that everybody knew that Justin Gaethje was gonna throw. And he 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 went for a specific strike that I never see Justin Gaethje ever throw. It's a head kick. So when I saw Justin Gaethje throw a head kick in rounds one, I was just like, Whoa, 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 whoa. this this is gonna be crazy because all Justin Gaethje has to do now is faint and probably go through and go for a head kick and probably land a head kick. Everybody knows that that uh, Dustin Poirier he's a very boxer dominated like uh, disposition. He likes to be in a boxer stance, right? He likes to, you know, plant his foot. He likes to be very heavy on his foot. And he uses that to push off. And then off the push off, he comes back into into uh, um, the pocket. And then that's how he moves. Justin Gaethje, 
did an, an, an amazing, 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 uh, you know, move, right? We're going to call it a move because in the post fight um interview he said that oh i i didn't i didn't i didn't even know i was gonna head kick him like uh i i really didn't throw that many head kicks in the fighting camp so justin gaethje being a counter puncher in the open stance got the win and i was really impressed because i really thought that going into this fight dustin poirier had the edge but I, I I say this a lot. I say the counter puncher in the open stance, orthodox versus southpaw. Whoever uh, counter counter punches off defense and off feints is most likely gonna win the fight. Justin Gaethje really didn't implement any feints, but he really had he had a lot of dispositions where you know, am I gonna throw a leg kick? Am I gonna throw a head kick off of just round one? In round two, he ends the fight. The head kick. Congratulations, Justin Gaethje. BMF title. He wants that uh, um, that fight against whoever wins between uh, Charles Oliveira and uh, Makachev. Um, that, that would be crazy to watch. Imagine if Justin Gaethje wins the title and then he somehow has to fight Volkanovski sometime in the future. That'd be a crazy thing to see. I know I want to see that. I want to see Justin Gaethje versus Alexander Volkanovski because everybody knows that Volkanovski is uh, he's uh, my favorite fighter bro and I want to see him you know dominate everybody in lightweight but anyways let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below uh do y'all think jo John Blahovich fight versus Alex Pereira do you guys think was, was that a robbery and uh Derek Lewis kind of suspect you know almost 40 years old coming into this fight with abs at 265 should Tony Ferguson retire right and what the hell was Michael Chiesa thinking taking on a fight against Kevin Holland <laughs> anyways I'm Reef uh, this was UFC 291 recap I'll see you guys in the next video peace out